when you were Jesus, uh, or July, whatever, um, he, used, he used to do a lot of healings in those days. Yeah. Um, by the way, I have CFS. Yeah. That's, that's not part of the question. There was a projection um, there, that I would have to do with that. <laughs> um, and you did your healings in those days. Do you find you have, to, if, if someone gets a healing, that it's basically healing the cause to the problem and then the physical um, um, hang, hang, hang on to that, which is the biological problem, yep. the physical problem, yep. um, goes away because there's a reconciliation between that person spiritually. Yeah, um, yeah, it's important to understand what's happening with healing. And in the first century, once I became at one with God, and the same will happen to all of you once you get into that state of at one with God, you'll feel it very, very easy to heal other people. But you'll also have some very strong divine love constraints, if you like, against, uh, upon that. When I say divine love constraints, there are certain laws involved with divine love, and we'll talk about some of them today, that actually limit what you may do because of free will. So if a person is holding on to an emotion within them, and then they come and they say, oh, I want to be healed, but they're not willing to actually address the emotional cause within them, healing them is actually a totally pointless exercise. Because what happens is if you heal them, they would just recreate the illness again through their emotional condition. So it's very important, and this also applies to spirit possession and other issues too, it's very important that people understand the causes of what's actually going on in each interaction, and that's very much the case with healing. If people don't understand the emotional causes and are willing to address the emotional causes, then what's the point of addressing the effect? One thing to bear in mind, and there's a whole discussion I have for a half a day on cause and effect, one of the laws of God. And one thing to understand that's very basic about God is God never fixes something at its effect level. He only addresses things at the causal level. You understand the difference? Like, you look at all a man's laws. We have, like, hundreds of thousands of... Most of you have got no idea what laws you are now living under. Isn't that the case? How many... You have to go to a lawyer to find out what laws you're living under, right? And even he doesn't know, right? He has to get out the whole taxation volume thing above and slap that on the table, and he has to get out all these other laws. And, and you know, that's why they study for so many years, to get to that condition where they even know how to find the law. And yet, we're automatically so-called living under this law, right? Now, all of these laws, the majority of them deal with effects. So, the law of you have to drive on one side of the road deals with an effect of people not being considerate normally, so you make a law so that everyone knows the same, to do the same thing. And it just makes everything more orderly and harmonious. And you can look at a lot of laws, like the law about speeding is one of those laws. Like, you're driving along, there's no one on the road, and there's an 80k sign. How do you feel? <laughs> like, you're driving along at 3 in the morning, and there's just no one there, just you, right? And, and there's an 80k sign comes up after 110, and you're looking around going, why am I doing this right? But if there's, like, the whole place is packed with traffic, an 80k sign might be far too fast, right? You might need to slow right down to 60 or even less because it's not actually addressing the cause of the problem. All of these signs and all of these laws. God only addresses causes. All right? So it's very important to understand that is also a principle with healing. God will only address the cause. So God's divine love will not enter a person to address a, an effect of a thing that's inside of them that has a cause if they are unwilling to deal with the emotion. Just to continue on that, if, if people practice healing, you're probably better off just working with the emotions primarily, and then the second secondary would be the physical response to that. Exactly. Yeah. You know all the spirit body work that you can do, like, you know, you can do a lot of spiritual healing work with chakras and so forth, and get all of the energy points in a person, physical, uh, person's spirit body working properly. All of that work is pointless if you can't understand that it's the soul, which is what we're going to talk about today, that's driving all of those injuries. <laughs> So this is why you can go back to a spiritual healing session, feel good for a day, mm -hmm. and then the emotions start, you know, of course the emotions are just going to reimpose their same errors upon the, the being. And so what's the point in solving the physical problem 
when the emotion that created the physical problem still exists within the person. All you're going to be doing is making them reliant on you. Now, God doesn't do that, but there are lots and lots of six-fear spirits and spirits on the natural love path who will do that constantly. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of healers nowadays who are healing people fairly well, but they get the injuries again back later. And the reason why is because there's a lot of natural love spirits who are healing the person for whatever reasons the natural love spirits have to do it, but not respecting this law of cause and effect in, in, that's happening upon the soul. 